f of x plus 5 look like or something like that, right? Um, so for example, uh, 6 through 18, right? Yeah. So here's a representative problem, like number, doesn't really matter, Let's do number 5. What I desperately, the, the, the reason I give this problem is so that you understand it doesn't matter what function I pick. So yesterday we were doing a uh, call. If I gave you the square root of x, right, that's definitely a function that passes the vertical line test. And I do, what would this look like? <coughs> Who remembers what that would look like? Yeah. Shift it over. Down. Yeah, is it inside with the X or is it outside? It's outside. Good. So it's not going to be left and right. It's not inside. It's going to be up and down. Shift down to. Down to. Desperately. Now watch. If it's outside, this is awesome. You just say, pretend like it's not there. Whatever the radical normally looks like, it's now going to be two less. I mean, it's very straightforward. It's when it's inside that it's weird. You have to make your x bigger if it was a minus 2 on the inside, so it would actually move up 2 if it was on the inside. So this would be a shift down 2. This would be a shift right 2. And again, why does it make sense? I mean, you can memorize this to a point, but just make sure, you, why does it make sense? All my inputs have to now be 2 bigger than they used to have to be. That's why the whole thing moves up too, to follow my bigger inputs. Now real quick, I'm sorry. So this little part of the homework would write this piece. This would be represented at, what is square root of x? Weird question, I know. What is the square root of x? It's f of x, right? Yeah. So how can I write this? So then I could be much more general. I can say whatever the hell the function is, what would f of x minus 2 do to it? It would take that function down 2. No matter what function it is. Square root was a specific example. If it was a parabola, it would go down 2. Right? If it was a, an absolute value, it would go down 2. If it was a cubic, it would go down 2. All right, that's enough. Squat. <laughs> uh, and the same thing here. This, how would you represent this using that notation? What is f of x? Square, square root of x. So how do I get x minus 2 inside? I would just put inside. x minus 2 inside, right? So they might ask you, given some function f of x, what would this look like? It would take it to the right 2. And that's what you say for the problem. Beautiful. Yeah, they don't say graph, and because you couldn't possibly graph, because they didn't even tell you what the hell f was. All you know is it's a function. So I don't care what the function is, the beautiful thing is, if I, see, if I say a minus 2 sitting next to a function, it will always take whatever it looks like, it will take it down to. Always. I don't care if it's square root, absolute value, parabola, well, I don't care what it is. And that's the awesome thing. It's not tied to the function. You see a minus 2 outside, pull the whole thing down by 2. Minus 2 on the inside, move the whole thing over to. Right? Yes? Okay, so just backtracking a little bit, but... On chapter one, I was doing some corrections. Oh, real quick, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not quite done with this. Because I think whoever asked that question, is that enough? Or yes, sir. That's good? Is that enough for everybody else? What would this do? Oh, shit. Make it shrink it. In which direction? Towards the one. I have it. Towards the one. Yeah. So I would accept a few different things. Officially, it would be a horizontal... Uh, Shriek, right? It would shriek in the order, or what's the word they use? Every book uses compression. a different word. Compression. I like it. Now, I like compression, actually, so I've got to remember that. It's like compressing a spring, right? So it would be a horizontal compression. If you say, uh, uh, cuts it by half on the x-axis, that's awesome, right? In the x-direction, it cuts it by half. Does that make sense? And why is it doing the opposite of doubling? Because that 2 is on the... Inside, right? All my inputs have to be how, how related to what they used to have to be. They have to be half as big because the first thing I do is double them. Right? So that's why the picture ends up getting cut in half. So if that if at one I went to three, now at one half I'm gonna to go to three. Because the first thing I do to my input is I double it. Okay, maybe, maybe I doubt it. 
yes, really. It still doesn't make sense. It's not as hard as you're tr trying to make it. And I, that doesn't make you feel any better, I know, but uh, <laughs> you have to come see me. It's, it's, uh, uh, so if, uh, if f of x, if f of 1 is 3, f of 2x, how would I make this a 1 so that I would get a 3 out? What would x have to be? What would x have to be to make this happen? One half. So it used to be x was 1 to make f of 1. Now x has to be one half. <coughs> so all the inputs now go to the out go to the outputs one half of the time, and half as long as it used to take. That's the right way to say that. If I was just better with English, I'd probably be better in general. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes. Can you uh, write that in what uh, like they would in the book? You know how they stand. This is it. Uh, on this section that I was asked about, this is exactly like number. Uh, like they write the words, uh, I guess it would be two by a number. Um, F two by a number. Do you know, do you know what section it is? Uh, do you I mean, mean that book, when know. they were talking about uh, uh, the verbal way to define right, a function right, right. and so forth? Yeah. Yeah. So that's when I think it's back in two one. Um, is it? Yes. Add three, then multiply by two. That kind right. of thing. Right. And that's that's more of a that's not really related to transformations. It actually is just totally. If they said, you know, add to, then square, what would that look like? So if it's x, yeah, plus two, plus two. add two, then square. But if I said square, then add two, it would be square, then add two, right? Which is kind of related to that because one's inside and one's outside, right? So this would move the parabola in which direction? Uh, no. Left twice, right? Okay. And what would this do to the parabola? Uh, up two. Sweet. So in that case, it is kind of related because it depends on where the two ends up, inside or outside. Thank you. All right. So, okay. So back real quick to 2.5, let me make sure we, we totally kill this dude. Um, what about, let me give you one that's got a couple things going on. Oh, like number 11. Oh, that's even worse. Than that. okay. Yeah, dude, I like it. So I give people this problem on a test, and, and, I, and they ask you to you know, like graph it. I give you f of x as a radical, right? I give you this, and they say, graph what that would look like. And that becomes a line. It becomes a straight line. I don't know how. Uh, this f is some function. So if I tell you f of x is the square root of x, whatever this stuff does to it, it better still look like that. Right? It's been moved around. It's been stretched, maybe. Maybe it's even been reflected. But it still has to have that shape. That is not a line, because that's a function doubling and all this stuff is happening to it, but whatever the function looks like originally, it better still look like that at the end, right? Yes, sir. So that reads as y is equal to twice the function of what you got in there? Yeah, twice the function evaluated at x plus 1 minus 3. Okay, so yeah. x just to the left of 1. All right, let's capture this. Ready? All right. And actually, what would it look In fact, here's the funny thing. You do the transformations using your normal order operation. So what's the last transformation we're going to apply? Subtract three. Subtract three. Subtract three. Right. If you do that too early and it involves flipping, you're not going to get, end up in the right answer. Right. That, well, how do I subtract? What am I subtracting three from? Whatever that is. So I've got to figure out what that is first before I can pull it down by three. Right. So I'm going to last, I'm going to take it down three. What am I going to do first? Yeah, on the inside, it's a good idea. So he actually it's the other way. So yeah, I want to go left. Because what do you do with a problem like this order operations-wise? You work from the inside out, right? So you go left one. What does this do? Double it. <laughs> be a vertical stretch. Because this will be twice the output. Is it on the inside? No. So it's going to do exactly what it says. It's the opposite. 
Exactly. I like it. I like it. Maybe, maybe. The reason the outside is so much easier is if I have this, <coughs> this is just that doubled. But if I say this, is that that? Can I find that here? No, so it's going to be a little bit weirder. Does that make sense? So I can find that here. It shouldn't be that weird. It's basically that, just doubled. Can I find that here? Shit. No. I got, it's going to be a little bit weirder. So then you've got to think, okay, it's weirder, so that means it's going to be the opposite of what, what it looks like. Does that kind of make sense? I'm throwing a lot of different ways to look at this at you. Okay, all right, maybe. So that's one of the worst ones up there um, in, the, in the homework. All right. Is that cool with, uh, you were cool earlier. So you're like, yeah, dude, that's even more. Yeah. The only thing I have a question on is how far do you stretch it with the two? Uh, I got everything else, I just, uh, you know how the two is. Let's do this on an actual function. Okay. So this is very abstract, because you don't know what the function is, and that throws people off. You think it's different. But that could be a square root. Again, all this stuff I was saying earlier. Uh, so pick a function. What function? Any function. Square root of x. Square root of x. You understand? Sure. I like persistent one this time. Uh, I want some kind of x dependence so things will actually happen. Um, so what would it look like if I applied this to it? Let's say that's g of x now is applying all this stuff to it. What would the function look like? Do you see it, how it looks exactly the same? Just the f is now written as the symbol. If I said f of x was x squared, it would have been twice x plus 1 squared minus 3. It has to maintain the same kind of form. You guys still with me here? Because if I can see all the shifts here, I still better be able to see all the shifts there when I put a specific function in. So all the shifts are the same, of course. They have to be. So my square root, the base function, Put some extra stuff here. All right. This is always the most exciting thing in the world. All right. So my base function, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. That's my base function. Do a little dash for the base. <coughs> so here's where you can be. Well, let's see what you guys are able to do. Uh, if you're really, really uncomfortable with this, I'd say do several kind of graphs. Do one transformation at a time. So let's do that for now. What's well, uh, the first transformation? <coughs> Left one. So that, that goes there, that goes there, and that goes there. So that's after the first transformation. I think I have more colors. Colors. Uh, I stole some two markers earlier. All right, so what's the second transformation? That's the first transformation, right? Let me put a little one next to that. That's the first transformation. Vertical stretch by two. Yeah, now I just double all my output. So that's going to be... What's the output here? Zero. So it's double that. Zero. All right, so that's still in the same place. Uh, that's why I stole it easy, because it sucks. Right. So what's going to happen to this one? Two. Two. Because the output is one, now it's going to double. Six. This one sucks too, it's too bad for me. And then this one is going to go to... Four. Four. I like it. Was yeah, since the output's two, now it's going to be at four, four, right? So as you do this, this is why you might want to use several graphs, maybe. you got to keep track. That was the original. That's where I am now. This is what I'm applying the next transformation to, right? Don't apply to this guy. He's not really there anymore. So I went back one, doubled. That's why it's there. So now it looks like this. And then what's the last dude? Down three. Right, back to black here. So down three. So everything goes one, two, three down. Pop. One, two, three down. Pop. One, two, three down. Pop. And there's, there's, that's where it is. How do you check this? Plug in the correct type. Or you could do. Uh, sorry, that's not what you sound like. Isn't that the point three one? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, if I make x3, y better be 1. The output. So if I make x3, 3 plus 1 is 4, rad 4 is 2, times 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1. Shit, yeah. 
So when you get your final answer, just pick a point off of it and see if it actually works. It's supposed to work. If I draw a line through it, it's supposed to work in the damn equation, right? It's a really good way to check your work again. What sucks is when you check wrong, you do something wrong there and you had the right answer, so be careful. All right. Is that cool? So that's, that's the connection between this, which is a weird problem when you first see it, but it's just they didn't tell me a specific function. It doesn't matter which function I use. It would be the exact same. So if I started with a parabola, I would have moved it left one. Then I would have doubled it. would have gotten skinnier, right? It would have gotten higher quicker. And then I would have moved the whole thing down through. It would have been the exact. So then the vertex would have been right there. So it doesn't matter which function I use. The shifts are going to be the same. Yes, sir. Can you do uh, number 66B? In 2-5? Yes. <coughs> oh, yeah, good. If this is a problem I have been known to give on a test, for example, that always gets people's attention, even though I might be lying. Um, so they give us a function. we just do the rough sketch here. Negative 3. They're not very specific either, so... There you go. Oop. Maybe you should be in the right place, Jeff. All right, so that's basically what that problem looks like. This is number 66. Part B says, so this is h of x. This function is h of x. So on the test, I could ask you, what's the domain? What's the range? I'd have to actually tell you what the hell those were. Um, but this is just asking you, part B says, graph what this would look like. So what should that do? I like it. So it's inside, so it's going to be left and right. Right, it's with the x, the x is left and right. <coughs> it's the opposite of what it looks like, so it's actually going to take it and it's going to stretch it, not compress it. It's going to stretch it, right? If it was three, it would have squished it, and it would have went, ah! Right. But now it's going to stretch that bad boy out. So now, where's it going to do this? Yeah, three, six, nine. And where's it going to do this? Six. I should have really, you know, maybe looked ahead at all. And what's it going to do here? It's nothing. Good. Three times zero is zero. I like it. Does anything happen with the maximum? Does that change? No. No. It just happens at a different place. So this happens roughly about two, let's say. So now it's going to happen at six. Do you guys see what I'm saying? You don't have to be that specific because they really didn't do a good job of telling me where things were, but that's the more specific idea. So now I know it should hit its maximum here, so it's going to look like, uh, make that big. And back here, it's going to go, a negative 6 it should hit its minimum, so it's going to go, no, it's supposed to be minimum, Jeff. All right, you get the basic idea. So it's the same shape, roughly, <coughs> it's just been stretched out. And again, it's because it's not going to do it by one-third. It's going to do the opposite because it's inside. What has to be true about all my x's? At 3, it used to go to 0. But now how do I get a 3 to show up inside? We have to make x to make this 3. No. Nah, that's why we went out to 9. That's why it makes sense that it does the opposite of what this looks like. Because the x has to react to this. So if it's compressed, does the maximum stay the same also? Or does it... Be exactly. Uh, if I'm only doing a, a horizontal compression or stretching, the maxes are going to stay exactly where they are, the mins, yeah, the, the amplitude, whatever we use that word the other day. Like so you would basically just uh, multiply the, you would multiply the x input by the opposite, or the reciprocal? Yeah, and, and more specifically, whatever it used to do at 1, it now must do at 3, and I, I, almost, I caught it, sort of, do you see that? So if you want to be really specific, and they weren't very, they were kind of vague, so it's only just the shape that you want to capture. But whatever it did at one, it's now going to do at three times that, it's now going to do that at three. So all the outputs stay the same, just that the inputs that go to those outputs are now three times bigger. 
Maybe. I love some of you guys are like. Alright. So many different expressions. Alright. Yes? And the concept that I know is this um this artist is going to be a post. It's never gonna be like one to three X and then it's gonna say by half or by one fourth. Is it always gonna be, you know, three X and one third, four and you know, one fourth, stuff like that. Instead of what? I'm sorry. So yeah, you would see like 4x inside, so that would cut it down by a fourth, right? Yeah, so if it's 4x, it's never going to be like by one third, right? It can't be, yeah. Yeah, I like it. No matter what the function is, if there's a 4 in front of the x inside, it's going to make it compress by one fourth, right? It's going to factor one fourth. Does that make sense? No matter what the function is, no matter what else is going on, that's what one of the things that's going to happen. Yeah. <coughs> question about like the homework in the class because if you're doing the homework online if you're in the increasing decreasing part they want you to use brackets even though you said oh, that's right that's right so, so since the, the author wrote that online. wrote the, the answers to those problems and he got them wrong in the book i expect them to get wrong enough so just do what he wants but so for the test right. we want parentheses for increasing decreasing. Uh, probably not oh, i hate that. But since the textbook and the online is disagreeing with the right answer, I'm going to have to be, uh, I'm just going to have to put a note on the test if somebody gets it wrong. I, I hate when a book, sometimes a book just does it a different way than what I think is good. And then I'm like, I can take either way. But this is actually fundamentally wrong. I've got to remember to write to these people. And I will now be that person. Normally I'm not that person. Yes, I didn't get the required number of blue M&Ms. No, I don't normally do that. But this is huge. This is like a wrong thing. This is sucky. And this guy, I like the author. He's normally really good. Sorry, that's another answer. So you're right. On, online, do what they want. So you can get the answer right. Just understand that that is not correct, actually. As a student, you're all like, well, you guys figure out math, and then we'll come back and take your class. And I'm like, yeah. Sorry about that. But there are some areas where there is legitimate differences of opinion. This is not opinion. This is just wrong. I just want to make sure on the test you want in parentheses. Yeah, I would like them, but if you don't put them, I'm, I have to be okay with it because the book showed that, right? So I'll just build a note. I, probably, I, I will not take points off for that, uh, for that specific thing. All right, so later's gonna. You just said you weren't gonna take a one side for that specific thing. All right. Anything else? There's plenty. We got to get into some other stuff here. Uh, two six. <laughs> two six. Uh, I'm gonna go through a little bit quickly. So get ready. Uh, so chapter one was definitely a review, so we went too fast. Chapter two is still mostly review. So I am going, you can always slow me down if I hit something weird. Chapter three, we're going to really start hitting some new stuff. So you will see that we'll slow down a bit in chapter three. And especially when we get to trig, because a lot of you guys have never even seen trig. So then I'll really slow down, right? Uh, but again, this, is, this should be relatively easy compared to what we've been doing. Slow me down if you need to. You know, like just, I'm always holding a stop sign, Jeff. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this. If uh, I gave you this function and this function, and I said, and I said this, I asked you this. Uh, what do you got, Jeff? Sure. What does your gut tell you if you don't actually know what to do here? What does your gut tell you to do? I don't know. I don't know. I'll put plug in two. And there's even a better way to do it. You can actually do it that way or... Raise my hand. You... <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, You could do it that way. You could actually get a new function based off of adding these together. If you add these together, is there any like terms or anything interesting? No, so screw that. You could do that. But well, something is a little bit better. I, I hate this notation. <laughs> Really what's happening here is this is f of 2 plus g of 2. That's all it is, right? So you figure out what f of 2 is, figure out what g of 2 is, and then <laughs> add them together. <coughs> so what's f of 2? <coughs> Zero. And what's g of 2? Two? 2. So the answer is 2. Sweet. So if I put a minus sign there, it would be subtraction, right? 
You guys with me? So don't make this more than it is. If I put this in there, what do you think I'm going to do? Crazy. Yeah, exactly. You do what it looks like it wants you to do. It's crazy. So they want you to divide f of 2. So you can write it like this if you want to, so it's a little more straightforward. f of 2, of course, was 0. g of 2 is 2, so you get 0. And how do you think we do multiplication? Same. I like that. <laughs> FG. I like it. Cool. Sweet. And then you just take 0 times 2 and you get 0. Right. Now, is that difficult? No, it isn't. I can't even try to make it difficult. You know, like I know you normally do that. I can't. I try to. Um, all right. That's one thing. The other major thing in this section, uh, and actually let me say something about domain real quick. Uh, let me give you two different ones. Uh, all right. What's the domain of F? How'd you figure it out? Four minus x greater equal to zero. So you get x less than equal to four. Is that cool? All right, all right. What's the domain of g? Yeah, everything except. Yeah, good. So x not equal to one. All right. So far so good. You with me? So it should. You should expect, if I start mixing these like we did here, that the result inherits all the problems of the two parents, right? You can think of this as genetics. So if I take Fred and Gina, they have a baby. That baby's going to inherit all their defects, right? This is not exactly <laughs> genetics. This is the extreme harsh genetics, right? It's going to inherit, inherit all of the same restrictions. The restrictions, exactly. Right. So defects is just a temporary word I used because it was humorous. Um, so what would the domain of this be? What's the domain of, let me write this a little better. This, I really want you to understand, the reason that we have this notation is because this is now a new function. It's a function that's made from adding these two together. <coughs> but what would the domain of this function now be? Let's see you guys. Can you write it in interval notation? The domain of that function. So it's going to inherit all the problems. So it has the problems here. So it's at least going to be negative infinity up to 4. But what's wrong with that as the answer? Ah, shit. So how do I really want to write this then? The domain would be negative infinity up to 1. Parentheses. Parentheses. 1 to 4. Cool. And remember, I look at this little thing as skip 1. Right? So the domain of a combination of functions is the combination of the domains. It, it inherits all the restrictions, right? Is that decent by itself? Let me let that sink in. Don't make that harder than if you can find all the domains for everything involved, then you automatically know what the domain is of the answer. Now the one extra place you gotta be careful is what about if I had uh, you can do it, Jeff. I like this one, right? G over F of X. What would this guy's domain? What, what's the added problem? Why isn't this the answer to this? What else do you have to not allow to happen? What's on the bottom? It can't be zero. Yeah, F of X can't be zero. So whatever X value makes F of X zero, you have to throw out. So this is almost right. What's the only thing you have to change here? Four. Yeah, what makes this zero? Four. Four. I want to make sure everybody's with me. Since the F is on the bottom, the only one that would be different from what we did here, minus would be the same, times would be the same, they would all be the same. The only one that's different is this because it introduces more places where there might be a problem. Because F now is on the bottom. So that's almost the answer. I just have to also throw out anything that makes F zero. So then the answer would be, 
negative infinity to 1. Union with 1, 2, 4, throw it out. I can't let it be 4 because it would make the bottom 0. Huge stretch of length. Really? A Monty Python? Yeah, all right, there you go, yay! I like to see where you guys are. All right. Totally. Right here, your eyes. It's a flesh wound. All right. I was in theater in high school, so it was required that you know and able to do the entire movie any second. Um, all right. Oh, okay. So now we're ready for the next thing. Oh, good. We got plenty of time. So that let please let that be simple. Please let that be easy. It's really not that big of a step from what we've done before, right? You can start. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so now let's get into something. Somebody told me they really didn't like. So we're definitely gonna make sure we do it. All right. This is not English composition. Don't worry. Composition of functions. And I'll tell you one thing I disagree with in general, but you know, it's not good enough to write to this person because everybody does it, every math person everywhere, and I hate it. That's my own thing to deal with. We use this stupid ass symbol. Right? And students are like, that's what I'm in, basically. Right? It's the fog function, or if we turn around, it's like the goof function. Whatever you want. So really, all this stupid little symbol, and I'm, I, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, denigrating math. I'm saying I disagree with this wholeheartedly. <laughs> the better way to write this stupid thing, this is f of g of x. Let me write f of g of x. That makes so much more sense. Why do we need that extra stupid symbol? Well, that's just me. It's too bad for me. So this, of course. Someone got paid to invent it. Someone got paid to invent it. They, they, no, they probably just didn't get killed. <laughs> and so this, of course, would be G of F of X. So on a test, I might put this symbol, but more than likely I won't. I just want to cover my ass if I do. Uh, so let's, let's do an example. We've, I, we've already done this. We've already done composition of functions. You just didn't realize it at the time. So let me give you a problem we've already done and then point out to you it's this. And then we can get to the next section. All right. So if I give you f of x is x cubed minus 2x cubed. What is f of, what is f of x minus 1? Yeah, x minus 1 cubed. Good, minus 2 times x minus 1, right? And then you could, if I wanted you to, you could foil on it. But that's basically the idea. And then you can uh, distribute and stuff. You guys with me? Now, watch. Here is what a problem in section 2.5 is going to look like. That actually is the exact same problem we just did. In section 2.5, they're going to say, all right, okay, well, f of x is x plus 2x. Okay. And g of x is x minus 1, and they're going to say, and the book, of course, is going to say, what is f o g? Which really we know to write better as f of g of x. So what am I plugging into what? I'm plugging g into f, right? And what is g? I always work from the inside out, so let me replace G with what it is, and it is this, and that's exactly the damn thing we did there. Right? We've done this before. I just didn't call this input its own function. I could have. Sure, that's the G of X function. Why not? You guys kind of with me? You've done stuff like this. I had you do this on the quiz, right? If I remember correctly. All right, maybe. No reaction. Okay, with that. <laughs> I guess. Uh, it's the same damn thing. So if you see this, do this, and you just replace that with what it is. And then, of course, what do you do with that? You plug it into F, and you get exactly what we got here. And you simplify it. There's not much more I can say about that. That's all composition of functions is. Is that instead of giving you an expression like A plus H to put in there, they give you a letter. They actually make that another function, and they say, now throw that function in. Yes? 
how does this interact with piecewise functions? So if I had a piecewise function, I like the attempt to make it complicated. Uh, piecewise function, right? Now, of course, we are never in this class going to look at two piecewise functions and try to plug one in the other because I think that's where you were thinking. That's a little bit beyond what we need to do here. Because then you'd have trouble with the, you'd have like two cases here, two cases there, and you might end up with four cases based on where they overlap with their inputs. Now, if you have no idea what I just said, you're fine. Real quick, though. If I said g of x was, the most you would, might possibly see is this. And then I said, what's f of g of x? Which is f of x squared. If you just put an x squared, everywhere you see an x in there, right? And But the, the, you actually would have to be careful about, well, possibly you have to be careful about that. So even that question is a little bit beyond what we need. Yeah? Yeah? Is that a 3? You seem here? to have a trouble with no, no, no. threes. Um, I know, three is my worst. Sorry? Five here? Square. Yeah, so it's a cube root. Oh. I started making a square root, but then it would have trouble with some of my inputs, right? So I just made it a cube root. Oh. They don't have trouble. It's a good question, but we're not going to see really piecewise compositions. Not here. Okay. We'll leave it there. But I like you brought it up. You so totally could. I've seen it before, and it just completely left me. Strange. Where were you? Yeah. Southwestern. Oh. God help me. <laughs> I don't know what kind of... I mean, you could do it. It's in math, and you could do it, but it's just not here. So yeah, I'm not going to do it right now. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Uh, not much more I can say there. So, so... Yes? So, piecewise functions... The function that you put the identity depends on what the x is. Exactly. Just follow it. But, yeah. If I'm doing f of g of x, that's the, that's, you just put it, you put what g of x is where x is. You with me? But, but there is a little bit of, you got to be careful with some of their domains and stuff. <coughs> that's why I don't really want to go down that road, because we don't need to. Because that would be like a two-day lecture that we don't need to do. Right? All right. So we'll forget that happened. Um, let me see. So let me give you a problem to do. Here we go. You ready? I feel like I'm not sure if I'm ready.
Yeah. And the square and the square root can do something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, Before I, like I do that, I want to make sure the setup was right. Are we supposed to be able to simplify it? A little bit. One little, well, we'll see. Yeah. At least one thing. And we'll see what happens after that. Could be worse. Don't say it's that. so desperately could be worse. <laughs> The idea with math is if you can do it once, you can do it many times. And that's all this is. That is not difficult. That is not that much harder. It's actually not harder. It's just a little bit more. All right. It's easy for you. Go ahead. Can I show you my setup? Do you want to start off in the right place? Do you want to use our videos activity? Maybe so to speak. No, no, no. But you always work from the inside out, right? So plug that into H, and then plug that, that whole thing into G. I like going back. Yeah. 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 And then the square and the square root. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can do one. Oh. Yeah. All right, let's look at this first one. Real quick, little, little side note. Little side note. You wish I would have given you this problem, but I didn't. All right, what would you do first on that? You do inside. You do this first, right? The innermost kind of parentheses. That's two squared is four. So you replace that with what it is, and then you do whatever else is asking you to do, right? Still from the inside out. So I'm going to start on the inside. Replace that with what it is. What is f of x? One over x plus one. So still working from the inside out. What is h of this? Square root of x Let me stop there for a second. Is everybody there? Yeah. So what I did was start from the. Uh, how do you always do math inside out? Because right? order operations kind of forces us to do that. Same thing here. Thank God. Replace that for what it is. Replace h of this with what it is. Now replace G of that with what it is. What is G of that? So it'd be one, one, minus one minus this whole ungodly thing. Yeah, we're not done yet, but yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, the square square root go away. Now be careful here. Let's see if anybody got this right. The negative has to go to both. Ah, See? Man, Jeff, we were almost feeling good. <laughs> then you had to go and do that. If that was the only mistake you made on that kind of problem, I would, I might even take any points off. But I just point out, hey, be careful. It's really easy to forget that. Right, it's minus this whole thing, so the minus has got to go to both, and then you get. It doesn't change that one because it's already positive, right? Well, it's positive now. It's yeah, negative. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you get negative one minus that, and that's good enough. You don't have to get LCD or anything. Right? All right, how are we doing there? Do you guys see that? Was that was that really difficult? Some of you guys are like, that, was, that really wasn't hard, as long as you know exactly how to approach it. And the, the funny thing is, you approach it the same way you've been approaching math problems forever. Good. How about this guy? People freak out because you're like, is that G cubed? No, no, no. It's not G times G, right? It's G of G of G, so you do it exactly the same Wait, the process doesn't care if you reuse the same function. You just keep putting the result back in the function again and again. Who cares? So what's g of 2? Yeah, 1 minus 2 squared is? Negative 3. What's g of negative 3? 1 minus 9, negative 8. And what's g of negative 8? One minus sixty-four, so negative sixty-three. Kick ass. Square. You're forgetting this. You just plug it. Ah. All right. How are we doing? Is that decent? You guys see that? When I first wrote that up there, you're like, hell. The process doesn't care. I keep using the same G, right? Math can't even get bored. Math does the boring, so it's fun. 
I, I, not for me, but I understand for people like this. All right. So the last thing we're talking about. In a little tiny bit of time we have left. Let me see if I can do this. And don't leave before you get the practice test. Um, section 27. Inverse functions. Let me start from a different place I normally do. Let me ask you this. What does that word inverse kind of mean to you? Opposite, Opposite in some way, right? <laughs> and if I ask you what's the inverse of 2, that's actually a trick question because I didn't tell you what kind of inverse. You could say negative 2 is the inverse of 2. That's the additive inverse. The multiplicative inverse of 2 is 1 half. You kind of with me? So the inverse of multiplication is division. The inverse of addition is subtraction. And that's amazing, right? Uh, so now this is going to become a lot more general. Any function we ever learn must have an inverse, and that's how we solve equations, right? If I have the cube of x equals 2, how would I solve that equation? How do you solve that equation? Make it cube of x. Yeah, you want to kill the cube root, so you... Why do you cube? Because the cube is the inverse function of cube root. So every time you've ever solved any equation, you were applying inverse functions. So the phrase inverse has no meaning unless we're talking about an operation. Exactly. So if I just said what's the inverse of 2, that's evil. That's me. And I've seen books that have done that before. I'm like, you're evil and you're me. Because <laughs> what inverse? The additive inverse, the multiplicative inverse. And now we're saying let's expand the whole idea to any function we have should have an inverse. Well, uh, math is really good about going both ways. Think what you will about it. Right? If I can take 2 and make it 8, I should be able to take 8 and bring it back to 2. Right? Now, that's not always going to be true. <coughs> For certain kinds of functions, you actually can't have an inverse. But let me ask you this. So if, if uh, let me say this. If f of x and g of x are inverses of each other, you with me? And I know f of 3 is 7. So f does something to 3 and makes it 7. Maybe it squares, uh, squares this and subtracts 2 or something. You, you kind of with me? I don't know what the function is, but it takes 3 and makes it 7. What would g do to 7? Make it 3. Make it back to 3. I love it. Okay, good. That's, that's at the heart of everything we're doing. It's really funny. What just happened? What was this guy's input? And this guy's output was 7. The inverse's uh, input is 7. So what the x and y do? Switch. Switch. Right? All right, good. So the really funny thing is the graphical way of doing inverses, the algebraic way of finding inverses, both involve switching x and y. Why? Because of what the hell we just did. This is how inverses act, right? Whatever that guy did to something, this guy is going to undo it. All right, so on the heels of that, if I give you a graph, which is one of my favorite problems to give you, if I give you a graph, f of x. <coughs> For me, that's really, really good. Uh, let me do this in purple. Uh, I've got to be careful. We've got to talk a little bit about why I'm being careful with what I'm doing. So I've got this, and we'll say it's defined in such a way that it's straight. So it's maybe it's a piecewise function of some sort. <coughs> so what points does that go through? F of x goes through what points? For sure. Those are a lot of points, but which one's for sure? Negative four. Yeah, I was meaning it to be three. That's funny. So negative four and negative three is equal. There's a reason I did that, but it's not a big reason. Negative four, negative three, what else? Negative two, zero. Negative two, zero. Two, zero. Yeah, two, one. one. Three, three. Three, three. I like it. All right. That's, that's nothing major. It's amazing. So what points must the inverse function, whatever that inverse function is, what points must it go through? Four, three. Negative three, negative three. Negative three. Wait, let me catch up. <laughs> Sorry. Negative three, negative four. Yeah, it's got to go through negative three, negative four. Don't make them positive. 
right? That's the specific inverse. It's an additive in. This is a more general, whatever the output was is now the input. It doesn't change the sum. So it would just, since that input was negative four, it's gonna take negative, four, uh, negative three and take it back to negative four. That's what the inverse would do. Oh, I'm sorry. At the same time I'm doing all this, I introduced some notation here. What I'm thinking about. This is the notation that means the inverse function. This does not mean, this does not mean the reciprocal. No. Right. It means the inverse function. Yes, sir. Okay, so then what is x, uh, or what is f of x inverse? I guess, is that how you would state that? If that negative one, f inverse of x. Yeah. I mean, if I took that negative one and put it inside that parenthesis in the same location, what the hell did I just say? Well, if, <laughs> if you said, if you had this somewhere like that, yeah, because yeah, I've right. seen that. Then that's going to be this, because that means the reciprocal of x, right? x to the negative 1 is 1 over x. Okay. Now, it's unfortunate that they chose this because a lot of students just take the function and flip it. That is not what this notation means. This notation means the opposite function. So if the function was x plus 7, what's the inverse function? What's the opposite of adding 7? So if it was x plus 7, the inverse would be x minus 7, not 1 over x plus 7. Do you understand? That's this notation means the opposite function, not the reciprocal of the function. Kind of sucks, but we weren't around when they came up with the notation. It's probably good because everything the whole world was sucky then. Uh, <laughs> you live in a decent time. So what what other point does it go through? Zero negative two. Zero negative two. It's amazingly difficult, right? One, two. Once you understand the basic idea, and it's a basic idea that most of you at least seem to understand completely quickly. It actually carries through. It's almost too easy to, to believe. So how do you graph the inverse function? Negative, negative 3, negative 4. Zero, negative, Zero, negative 2. two. One, two. Yeah, 1, 2. Three three, three, 3, 3. Now what's interesting about the shape? I love it. And where is the mirror? Y equals X. <coughs> If I switch the y and x, it kind of makes sense somehow that the graph is going to flip over the y equals x line. It's neat. It actually kind of makes some nifty pictures sometimes. This looks like some kind of spaceship or something. Or the sword from Halo. All right. So let's talk about the algebraic way to find inverses. So I, I love to give you a problem. There's some in the homework. Uh, where they give you a function and then you have to find its inverse and it's that simple. Let it be simple. It's the basic idea of switching the input and the output. That is what an inverse function fundamentally does. Was the result a function? Uh, yes. yes, why? <clears throat> one to one. Yeah, it's, it, no, no, you're getting ahead of me. Some of you guys had the words one to one in your homework that has not come up yet. A function can be not one-to-one -one and still be a function. It's fine. A one-to-one -one function is more specific. That's the I missed that. I missed that. Yeah, yeah, a one-to-one -one relationship with the original function. One yeah, well, we'll get there. It's because this function is one-to-one -one that we were able to do what we did and get a functional answer, right? If I had a picture like a, a parabola and I flip it over this line, it would end up looking like this. <laughs> Is that a function? No. So what do you think? And why is that not a function? Doesn't pass for a line test. So instead of flipping that thing, stay with me now, instead of flipping the thing actually, I'm going to flip the test. The test to see if something is what's called one-to-one, -to, -one, to see if it's invertible, I use the horizontal line test. Because that would be just the uh, same thing as flipping the damn thing and then using the vertical, right? Let me just not flip it and just do a horizontal line test. So to be a function, you've got to pass the vertical line test. So parabola is a function. To be invertible, and, and also uh, to be something that's, why do we call it one-to-one? -one? How do I get a four output? A four. This is x squared, right? How do I get a four output? A two, a two yeah. or a negative, two. a negative two. So if I saw a four laying on the ground, I was thinking about CSI. This is some, some really crappy math version. There's a four laying on the ground. Where could that have come from? It could have come from a 2 or a negative 2. I can't solve the case. You with me? So it's not 1 to 1. Negative 2 goes to 4, and so does 2 go to 4. It's not 1 to 1. 
right? It, it, X goes to Y, Y's got to go back to that same X. This is not that. That's why we call it one to one. They go together both ways. Yes. So if it if it can be um, inverse, it has to do the horizontal line. Beautiful. If it does not pass a horizontal line test, that means if you try to find an inverse, you actually will get not a function. Bless you, I like it. How are we done so far? Bless you. So last thing I'll do real quick, and we're going to obviously, next time it's going to be a review, so we can go all, through all this stuff again. Um, I still got to give you a practice test. I just want to show you real quick. This is just really, really, I desperately want to see how simple this really is. Switch the X and Y to find the inverse, right? Stay with me. So if I ask you, find the inverse function of this, what do you do? Turn it into Y equals I like it. So bring the Y back into play. That's what F of X really is, right? And then you... Switch X and Y. Switch X and Y. The reason that I draw that line is so that... It's not it's some kind of OCD, I think, but from this step to this step, I didn't actually do anything algebraic. I did a concept, right? That's why I draw a little line saying, I'm applying a concept now. This is not equal to that, but I'm trying to do something. Does that make sense? You don't have to do that, but it kind of would be nice. Uh, and, then, and then you solve for Y. Now, here's the funny thing. I really want this to make sense. If I solve for Y... I'm going to do all the opposite operations in the opposite order, right? So this guy added 7. What's the first thing I do when I solve for y? So it totally makes sense that this process will end up with the inverse function. It'll be the function that does everything opposite, right? That'll be x minus 7. What do I do next? Cube it. Please, dear God, don't actually cube this, right? Just leave it as x minus 7 cubed. Right? There's no need to do that. And then what's the last thing? Add 2. That'll be F inverse, right? So this guy adds 7, this guy subtracts 7. This guy subtracts 2, this guy adds 2. This guy cube roots, this guy cube... Oh, okay. so let me give you the practice test. I know that was a little fast and furious there, but... Which means there's not really what we call an inverse. So I can take a parabola and I can turn it. But I wouldn't officially call that the inverse because it's not a function itself. So. Monday, so don't turn these in to me. Uh, do not do any of these problems more than like twice, because then you get to know the problem, not the idea. If you know all the ideas on this, you should do really well in the test. I said a lot of teachers speak there, but parse it out. Um, during the test, is it going to be test and then 